table in front of us for this afternoon for the next little bit. Plus, is um, just getting feedback on uh, the testimony that we took from Michelle Childs and the conversation that we had uh, on the cannabis bill. We had a section that was highlighted that was specific, but um, there was the. Um, I, we never. We don't own the bill. It should be on. It should be off of government offsite. We don't. I mean, there might be a version under Michelle's name. But, Let's pull it up off their website. Um, okay, then. So I, I mean, committee. It's just discussion time. I mean, I. We need to write a memo to them mm -hmm. to that talked a little bit about what they were talking about, which was what they highlighted was specifically about the opt-in, opt-out part of um, some of the licensing, and I think. But I think the conversation can go a little bit wider, only in the sense of. Um, <coughs> The, the, the question, as it was explained to us also, is not just on that specific language, but on the notion of trying to institute a controlled business out of nothing, out of not being controlled at all. And um, yeah, I think I mentioned this earlier, my, my outlook on how that might happen and, and the outlook that I've held for a while has changed because of the because of the explanation of what constitutes a felony and who's responsible for that and how we have to deal with mm -hmm. trying to legalize a substance that federally is still illegal and there are consequences to certain choices so I, I, well, I, that was very convincing to me what I heard that what you just said I don't think we have to debate I, I mean I so agree with what you said. But it can't be. It can't be a control. Thing, same thing with our liquor. So, what's proposed is. Oh, yeah, I mean, given the exposure. Yeah. Um, I mean, our tweeter in chief is a little, a little erratic with his mood swings these days. He decides to clamp down. All right. The opt in and opt out. Tommy, go ahead. Well, I just want to add, Kat, our coach Christy was on this committee last year and was part of it. He and I have been having some conversations on this, and his attitude is bring it on, federal government. Let's do it like we know how to do it with alcohol when you get the federal government. What's the slap us with coach. Coach. Oh, coach. coach. Okay. Yeah, he lives in Hartford. He could just move to New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> True, but I find it's going to make a lot of sense. I'm not necessarily agreeing with that, but I find that kind of an interesting attitude. You know, we've got a system that we know works very well with alcohol. And like you, I always thought cannabis was going to fit in there somehow, in that same kind of structure. Uh, I, I agree that it should. Yeah, it should. As a, as a working, functioning mechanism, I totally agree with it. But it, it, it's annoying that we can't do it because of some boneheaded policy at a higher level. I'm sorry, I'm editorializing, but <clears throat> yeah, at a higher level. We yes. are editorializing because it's illegal on a federal level. Right. So that, that definitely is not the view of everyone sitting in this room. Yes, I, and I, I'm agreeing with that. That's, and I think that's that's the one that shouldn't work. Yeah, agree. Well, and I think this whole conversation, and I and I, you know, it is this conversation about cannabis at at any point really is it's not even in the on the back burner that there's a federal law that prohibits, and we can agree or disagree. Um, about that, I certainly do. I don't. I believe that med, you know. I believe marijuana has a medical has medical benefits. I believe you know. There's a lot of things I can say that would say. Then why is it a Schedule One? But the fact remains is that right now it is, and we're being given an opportunity. The federal government has basically given us an opportunity to do things in a way that's in a way that has to be done in the way that uh, clearly they're not going to allow us to do something that we think is a better way of controlling the substance from seed 
to sale. Um, no other state, or is there no state that's done controlled? Is I, it Colorado or not? I'm not aware of a state yeah. having done a control of model at this point. Um, yeah, distribution is all within the individual companies. Right, so generally the, the view on this, so the other thing we run into with that too is federal, preempt, federal law preemption. So there's the supremacy clause in the Constitution where the <clears throat> regulation that's been reserved to Congress, uh, you can't have state laws uh, that are in conflict with that. There are powers that are specifically reserved to the states under the 10th Amendment. But in this case, the way the Controlled Substances Act is written, uh, I think it's under Section 903, they've waived all of the preemption except for direct conflict preemption. And so what that means is if you have a state law which you're, where it's physically impossible to comply with the state law and to comply with the federal law, the federal law prevails and the state law is unconstitutional. So what we've got here is that if, again, with the control state model, the other issue is if you're ordering, if you're requiring state employees to take possession of and distribute a prohibited drug under the Controlled Substances Act, that's in direct conflict with the Controlled Substances Act. So not only would they be exposing themselves, would they be exposed to a felony charge on an individual basis, not to mention the conspiracy and attempt charges for the commissioner and other state officials, uh, what you'd also run into is that that law would be preempted by federal law. The difference is when you have the model that's being proposed here and the model that's been incorporated in other states, it's not requiring anyone to sell marijuana or distribute it. It's simply saying the state's going to permit you to do this and it's up to you. So that law is not preempted. Um, and I realize that this is starting to sound like legal hair splitting. <laughs> but this is, this is the current way things have read. There, there is some <laughs> argument on this issue, but right now what we've got is that's not directly in conflict with the Controlled Substances Act. Uh, so we're not preempted. And those individuals who are distributing uh, or possessing or selling are taking the risk that at some point the federal government will change its position and they'll be, uh, they'll be able to be prosecuted for a violation of federal law because they're acting in violation of federal law. But right now the federal government has taken the position or Congress has taken the position that the federal government will not prosecute those offenses. They haven't changed the law. They're just saying we're not going to prosecute at this point. Uh, and that amendment has to be renewed periodically, and it's done through the appropriations bill, so, uh, which is why there's that uh, level of unpredictability here, because it's, that's something where uh, it took them about 10 years to get it onto an appropriations bill. Sometimes the reauthorization is only good for a few months, sometimes <laughs> it's good for the fiscal year. Our current reauthorization, I think, runs through the end of the fiscal year, and then they have to reauthorize this, uh, the Lohrbacher Amendment, for an additional period of time so that the Department of Justice won't spend money on enforcing marijuana laws in the listed states where we have decriminalized or legalized marijuana, either for medicinal or recreational or both. Uh, so that's, that's where we stand right now. So we're not preempted as long as we aren't requiring anyone to take possession. As soon as you move to that control state, you've got that double whammy of exposing state employees and state officials to criminal prosecution, and also the question about whether the law is even, even legal under our constitutional model, or whether it's preempted by the federal government. Lisa. Um, I just want to be perfectly clear, because you brought up medical marijuana. This is, we're not talking about medical marijuana in S-54. Sorry, wow. are we? Yeah. <clears throat> S54, we're not talking about medical marijuana. We are talking about recreational. Is that correct? Well, we're talking about yeah. taxing and regulating recreational marijuana, yeah, right. which we've legalized. Right, so I didn't point. understand your reference to medical marijuana earlier before Damien spoke. 
Did I refer you to did. it? You um, did. And I didn't understand. I don't know what the context. I don't know what the context would have been for okay. the medical marijuana. I mean, medical marijuana is discussed in the bill only in the sense that um, right now the Department of Public Safety controls medical marijuana, controls the licensing and the sale. Um, I, I, I don't remember using the word medical, so I don't know. Sorry, but, maybe I misheard. No, 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 I, think, no, no. I, think your, I think your reference was to <coughs> it, question as to whether it should be a Schedule One drug because it has been determined to have medicinal oh. purposes. Yes. I think that purposes. was the I reference. Think, I think you're right. Yeah, okay, no, right. So. Yeah. Right. That's all. Not not the specific. Okay. I mean, by approving medical marijuana, we made a policy choice to say that there is a medical benefit. And that's fine. To yeah, um, to marijuana, um, but but to your but to your other point, there is medical marijuana is only discussed in this in terms of as it's written now, which is different, slightly different than what we have on our wall, which um, the House version, which would have allowed, which would allow the medical dispensaries, the existing medical dispensaries to sell prior to anybody else. Um, this just, this does talk about the, the transition from DPS, public safety, controlling medical marijuana, um, and I'm not sure what else, but uh, oh, the tax, well, it's not being taxed, it's not, it won't be taxed as medical marijuana. I did hear a conversation with somebody like, why would the same question we asked, why would we need medical marijuana if we had it available? And uh, Michelle pointed out, you were allowed to hold more, you're allowed to grow more plants. You're, if you do buy it from a dispensary, you're, you do not pay tax on it. Um, that says nothing about the price or quality of which this bill speaks to in terms of a consumer protection piece. So what I, you know, what I've heard just so far is that, and again, I'm trying to collect information to, to include in a short memo to them. Um, we're not rewriting the bill. We're not suggesting really any language, but just the idea of while we, while we appreciate the state's ability to control alcohol in the way that it does, we also understand that the, we understand that the Controlled Substance Act is, you know, would put us would in, would would just put us in yes. danger of in, you know. She, she had highlighted the section when she did the presentation of the bill that was burdened to us. On license on the local licensing stuff. Yeah, I'm scrolling over to that right now. Yeah, we'll have to. So there you go, eight sixty three. So Damien, how does this differ from? Um, Right now, in, in, with alcohol, way back when, I don't know that people can still do it, but way back when, a number of Vermont towns were allowed to opt out of, they were, they were allowed to call themselves dry. And there are still some dry towns. Nope, last one voted out this past year. Well, hold on a second. There are, there are two types of dry towns. Right, okay, Vermont. sorry, yes. So there's yes. dry for everything. Right. And then there's dry just for spirits, Alcohol, but yeah. wet for beer and wine. So huh. I think okay. the burgeoning metropolis of Baltimore <laughs> is one of those towns. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ocean and, City, New Jersey, dry uh, for everything. Really, Rockport, yeah. Mass. Yeah. Yeah. Rockport, yes. Mass is actually going to be wet for something. <laughs> for something. <laughs> so, but uh, so what was the town? They, Norton, was it Norton or? Something way up there that had no retail business that just voted. Holland, Holland, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. it just didn't have a store. No, they don't have a store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Ocean Park, Maine, yes. is, uh, which is right next to Old Orchard Beach, which is definitely wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the section you're referring to, um, if you don't mind me pulling up a new page here, is. Uh, so in Vermont statutes here, or the alcoholic beverage statutes here, sorry, getting mixed up as we start talking about other states. Um, so there's this section 161. This dates all the way back to prohibition. Uh, so 
basically uh, what it says is that annual or special meeting upon a petition you would have this question of shall licenses for the sale of beer and wine be granted or shall licenses or spirits and fortified wines be sold so there are these two questions so you could be dry for spirits and fortified wines uh -huh. but not for beer and wine yeah or you could be dry for both up until from 1934 until 1968 every single year vermont towns voted on this at town meeting until 1968. Wow. Until 1968. Oh, huh. So, and in this bill, 1967, <clears throat> number 271. So that was Act 271 in 1968. So it's the 1967-68 session. They changed that, which is why you have this funny language here that says licenses and permits shall be issued in accordance with the vote. Uh, at the annual town meeting held in March 1969 mm -hmm. until a town votes otherwise. So the state kind of finally said there after 35 years, hey, why don't we just settle it once and for all and then we can come back if we change our minds down the road. And so that's where things stand now. So no. most towns uh, in Vermont have gone wet for both. Some towns, uh, I guess the last town that was dry for both is, is gone, but I don't know the list this, this the says, last few years ago. This this says from, from twenty nine from town meeting yeah. that Holland voted okay. to be uh, to become wet. The town was only one of four dry towns in Vermont, which is different. But again, it's who knows. Yeah, so we're so down to Maidstone, Baltimore, and, and Athens or Athens or however you want to pronounce it. Uh -huh. Right. So we're we're down to a handful of towns there. <laughs> yeah. And if you look <laughs> at Department of Liquor and Lotteries information. There's a slightly larger group of towns where they don't allow hard alcohol to be sold, but they sell beer and wine. Um, so that's this one here. So it, it's it's been described variously as opt-in or opt-out, but it was really, I think, somewhere in the middle because it was annual, sort of an annual vote to see where we're at until 1969 when towns basically decided, are we in or out? Um, so uh, I think the, the current bill here is a little bit different because what it's proposing uh, is basically you're in unless you opt out. Uh, and so what this says here is you can prohibit the operation of a cannabis establishment or a specific type of cannabis establishment within the municipality at your annual or special meeting. Um, and this would not apply to a cannabis establishment that's operating within the municipality at the time of the vote. So basically what it says is you can have a town meeting to say we don't want to have grow operations in our town because of the various concerns about those, but we're willing to have a dispensary or a, a retail operation. And so you could basically say that our town here is going to be, dry is not the right word, but we're going to prohibit grow operations, but we'll permit retail operations. Um, now, will that have to be done at each town meeting? No, so really? no, this would be um, only if you want to stop it. So it's, it remains in effect until Opt rescinded. Out by a majority vote of those present okay. and voting oh, yeah. at another okay. meeting warrant for that purpose. So once you decide to opt out, uh, you're out until you decide to opt back in. Okay. So, and that's by special meeting. Right. So that, that's your standard sort of town meeting. Yeah. Yep. So you can either do it at your annual town meeting or at a special a meeting special. that you mm -hmm. warrant for that purpose. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just skip ahead here. because. So the, the various, there are five types of establishments. It's cultivator, right. wholesaler, manufacturer, product manufacturer, retailer, and testing laboratory. So towns might want to permit testing laboratories, but none of the others. Um, or they might say, uh, we don't want cultivators and we don't want wholesalers, but we don't mind if you're man manufacturing products, uh, and we don't mind if you have retail sales. Um, or they might say we don't want retail, but we're fine with everything else. So there is a lot of flexibility here. 
Um, so towns are not just simply <coughs> wet or dry. So that's one big difference. The other big difference is that this isn't the sort of we're going to vote whether we're in or out. It's a, you're in unless you vote to come out. Um, so that's it's it's a pure opt out model. Nothing about distribution in five. So, um, well, the wholesaler would be distribution. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So wholesale is going to be warehousing and distribution. And so, and so retail, for Tom, you had a question. Well, yeah, and this is purely theoretical. Uh, if the town chooses not to hold that vote, I mean, they just don't do it. And there's no way at the end of like a, a pot rush in your community of, of different licensees coming in. There's nothing to control that. So, um, yeah, if you haven't held the meeting, uh, their licensees can come in. So the subsection B, though, kind of addresses that a little bit. Uh, so this is allows a municipality that's got uh, cannabis establishment to establish a cannabis control commission. Okay, yeah. Um, and this is like in the alcohol beverages law where you have a local control commission. There are some, some differences here. So. Uh, under the liquor laws, the control commissioners are your select board or your city council. Under this, it says they may be members of the municipal legislative body, which to me means that you could have a separate body that's your cannabis <coughs> control commission. So that sounds like a local control option to me. Uh, and then the cannabis control commission may administer municipal permits under this subsection. Um, and they may condition the issuance of a municipal permit upon compliance with any bylaw or ordinances regulating signs or public nuisances. And that's similar to the relevant uh, alcohol provisions. So if I switch back over to the alcohol law. But I would assume they could also consider zoning. Uh, so your zoning permit is a different permitting process. Um, so, you know, like you can't build a commercial or manufacturing facility in something that's zoned residential. Mm -hmm. right. But that's a different control process, which is continues to be reserved to municipalities, <clears throat> is my understanding. Um, again, I, I do need to emphasize that I'm coming to this bill from the outside and not the person in our office who's the expert on it. But just like with liquor establishments, I mean, in the same way that I forget what zone I'm in, like medium density residential or something here in town. There's no provision for me to run a bar out of my garage, um, even if it's the greatest proposal ever, which I don't think it would be. <laughs> You've seen my garage. <laughs> but, uh, right. subjective. Only to the 14 year old. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it, it is a finished garage. It was, it was an art studio at some point in history. But, uh, yeah, I still wouldn't. Yeah, anyway. Um, I, I'm on video here, so I should just stop. <laughs> <laughs> there are 27 people on YouTube who are going to watch this video. <laughs> I might be one of them. So, um, the, uh, so, um, but anyway, so the, the control commissioners under our liquor laws can also administer, uh, the rules here, and then um, they they have this authority to condition the issuance of licenses upon compliance with any ordinance regulating entertainment or public nuisances. So there is slightly different. It's actually slightly broader authority under the uh, the marijuana bill here, um, S fifty four. Under that one, you'll see that what you're looking at is that they can condition it on a bylaw adopted pursuant to the bylaw ordinance, um, an ordinance regulating signs or public nuisances. Um, and generally, the just for reference, even though the sign language isn't in the local control thing uh, piece here, um, liquor establishments are required to comply with sign laws. Um, that's just in a different part of Title Seven. So, um, 
Under here, you can suspend or revoke a local control permit for a violation of a condition placed upon the issuance. That's the same as under uh, the liquor laws currently, um, although it's suspension uh, for the local authority and then revocation. They can, a local authority can conditionally revoke a permit, but they, it has to be approved by the Liquor Control Board. So typically what happens is the local authority suspends it and asks the, the Board of Liquor and Lottery to uh, revoke the license. The other option for the local authorities is they may just not renew your license the next year. Um, so that's, they're not required to approve it. So what's happened, for example, in uh, some municipalities that have had a problem with an establishment and they've gone through the suspension process a few times, is that the next time that establishment comes in to renew the license, they don't approve the renewal, and then the establishment closes. So on the, on the um, <laughs> licenses, again, we heard from Michelle that under current law, medical dispensaries merely have one license. Um, that was all that was developed, and they were allowed to have a vertical integration to grow and to package and to make edibles and to, to sell. Um, this contemplates something completely different, which I think is right, mm -hmm. that there's that there's multiple licenses. Um, but I haven't heard clearly about retail establishments or retail licenses. Um, in our state, we can sell cigarettes, uh, wine, beer in every single mom and pop or convenience store or gas station or many supermarkets. Uh, there's liquor is only available in 80 locations because it's controlled. Um, where does does this make does this legislation as it stand make any recommendations about limiting the amount of licenses that would be given for retail purposes? I don't know. So that's a question that's better for Michelle. I, I asked that question earlier today. There's a, and like there's CB, no cap right now. CBD infused brownies and things are in many restaurants now. So I could see a year from now there could be, right? Well, I think the, 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 the watch over, I heard a question about, um, <coughs> I heard a question about uh, THC and butter. Yeah. Right, you, you know, infused infused products, and I would assume that that would be a rulemaking situation uh, that would that might fit under a rulemaking situation as as people started to turn. when when hemp was legalized. My memory of hemp being legalized was oh look at how many textiles we'll make, and by the time the industry got up and going because seeds were hard to come by if not illegal to buy at first. Um, all of a sudden, hemp was about CBD oil and not about textiles or not about rope or the conventional things that you would think about, you know, that you would connect to hemp. So I, I would imagine that, that under these circumstances that the, the commission would be able to start to, they start hearing about, I mean, you, all you got to do is go to any website and find out how many products are available, what restaurants where it's been legalized. So I, I I, but I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 but to your point though, you can buy alcohol only in 80 stores and then sell it in your restaurant. And I think I'm just, if this doesn't speak to that, then I wonder if that's something that we want, not necessarily to demand of them, but just to say, you know, pay attention to the fact that, um, we don't, we're not really big. We may not, we may not be big fans of seeing marijuana available at every gas station. So, or animals at every restaurant, every yeah. bakery. Yeah. yeah. Right, without. Yeah, without a food. Mm -hmm. Well, fine. Go ahead, John. For, for me, these five separate licenses make it even more complicated because some towns could say they don't want the crop to grow. Right. And we're not saying you can't grow corn, you can't grow soybeans, you can't grow hay on your land. And so if it's legal in our state, it, it's complicated, you like, but, well, yeah, but it's vertically integrated, like in, in me medical marijuana dispensers. I can see where it's opt-out, opt out it's, it's, and then, you know, there's, there's all these other stores that are, all these, in these five different licenses, and it seems overly, it's 
overly politically correct to me to make it just like the scary marijuana is here, and so let's and it's like well we already went we already we're beyond that now. We've See. legalized it. We're now trying to regulate and tax it, and so. Um, I just can't see a farmer not being able to grow marijuana if it's in our state. Well, I, I see that. I, I see what you're talking about more like, like hemp falls under that category of corn, right? When you're talking about something that has an inebriating level of THC in it, I see that more as somebody who is a brewery or a distiller. That's a different type of licensing. That's a different type of indoor control. People who are going to be growing high, you know, THC level inebriating. Marijuana products are going to be doing it like under a roof in a controlled environment with security, just because of the nature of the product. Where the hemp industry, I see, compartmentalized different as an agricultural dynamic, and even that, I think, is. I mean, even though that falls under that same vein as CBD, they're two kind of like different strains of the same product. I, I now we're getting just like deep into classification. I like to yeah, I would. Like I would also point out that possession of. Possession and homegrown is what's legal. Um, commercial crops are not legal. But in this building will be, correct? If they're licensed. Licensed, right. Yeah. Right. So I you know, I I I hear what you're saying, but I also think if that's the case it'll be 10, 15, 30 years down the line when if it becomes legal, it becomes fully a part of our full culture. I think the concern for, uh, you called it politically correct, I, I would call it controlled, where in, uh, in Massachusetts, I guess, there's been a problem where there might be a unified license, and the concern is, um, quote unquote, big business coming in, big companies coming right. in from out of That's state right. that are, yeah. now, I think there's a reality, just because of the way the world works, that big money will be here. Um, if the federal government ever legalizes marijuana, um, we will have we will probably set up a system like what we have now for beer and wine, which is if you want to sell, there's the grand there's this thing called the Grand Home Decision, which is about s selling alcohol across state lines, which says that which says that if you want to sell if you want to sell if I want to sell my marijuana in Michigan. I need to let Michigan sell wine or whatever in, 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 in this state. So, um, but I, I appreciate the separation of the licensing to sort of put the brakes on this vertical, in, like I don't think that, I think if anybody has medical marijuana, they might say, and I've heard this from a couple of people, is that you don't have a choice uh, people can buy better pot on the street for about the same price, if not better. And, and there's no control over the quality of the marijuana in the medical dispensaries. Well, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this at least tries to set up a system that it's everybody should have an interest in just making the best product, safest product um, possible. A, it's not the same, I mean, it would be similar if we had a control model like we talked about. We'd just be cutting out the wholesaler's license because it would then come to the state. But uh, anyway, those are just thoughts to keep in mind. Um, just to get to the issue of uh, some of the controls in here, so to keep in mind, uh, if you'll think back to the walkthrough that Michelle did, the way this bill is set up, it's on a long timeline. Uh, so we're looking at uh, enactment this year, and then there's rulemaking going on from November of this year through September of next year. Uh, and then in January of next year, they're presenting some fee recommendations and coming back to the legislature. Uh, and then um, the first applications start right after the rulemaking finishes, but you're talking about a one-year rulemaking period. And the rulemaking list in here goes on for a couple of pages about the things that they need to establish for cannabis establishments. So form and content of applications, qualifications for licensure, 
oversight requirements, inspection requirements, record keeping, employment and training requirements, security requirements, restrictions on advertising, marketing, and signage, health and safety, and a lot of these things have guidelines in the bill where the legislature is establishing sort of the, the roadmap of we want you to stay within these boundaries. And then they're uh, similar to other things, we're leaving it up to the board to fill in a lot of the details. Uh, health and safety requirements, regulation of additives, procedures for seed to sale traceability, um, regulation of the storage and transportation, sanitation requirements, procedures for license renewal, procedures for suspension and revocation, requirements for banking and financial transactions, and policies and procedures for outreach and promoting participation in the regulated cannabis market by various groups of individuals. Uh, and then if you look down, I'm gonna skip uh, cultivators and manufacturers and just go to retailers since that's what we were talking about. So proper age verification, uh, regulations on storing cannabis behind the counter or other barrier to prevent direct access to the product, requirements uh, that the hemp products be clearly labeled and displayed separately, and various facility inspection requirements and procedures. So a lot of this gets to the law enforcement type activities that we currently see with liquor and tobacco. Um, without getting into the specifics uh, here in this bill. So, um, but that, that's, I think, one thing to keep in mind is that there is some control here. It doesn't speak to a limit on the number of establishments. Um, so it doesn't, and it doesn't speak to uh, some of those other questions around, you know, for example, we have hard alcohol where it's limited establishments, but uh, alcohol below 16%, there's no limit on the number of establishments. Uh, the only limitation is whether the town is dry or wet, and then the financial limitation that the market places on it. So you know, those, those are just some, some things, and I mean, it's, it's tough because these aren't apples to apples. Right. Um, and alcohol deals with the whole federal regulatory system that is not in place for cannabis. So just um, FYI, so the towns of Athens, Baltimore, now Maidstone, and Weybridge um, had banned all alcohol beverages. What's that? Weybridge. That's what it says here. And while the towns of Addison, Albany, Corinth, Granby, Groton, Lincoln, Marshfield, Moncton, Pomfret, Rupert, Tunbridge, Vershire, Walden, Waterfall, Wells, Walcott, and Worcester are um, wet for beer. That wine is beer. Huh. Yeah, I guess wine it's too. It's the same license. Yeah. 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 Well, it That's just says beer. that it just, this report was from VLCT and they just said those towns have opted to ban the sale of all liquor but have not banned the sale of malt beverages. Not so Venus, huh? Could be one, or, <laughs> just, or it just could be a misinterpretation of, of the law. I'll check it with one other. No, they're, it's, it's the same. Their malt and Venus go together. Yeah. So, so committee, yeah, I, yeah, Venus would be the uh, tray. It's three o'clock on Friday. It's okay. Mary? Is there yeah. anything in this bill about law enforcement and testing? Uh, That's in judiciary. So there is, but again, um, it's not part of the bill I've focused on. Okay. So I've, I've right. been looking at the stuff that we're dealing with. Right. Uh, so that's a better question for Michelle. Um, I can run you through that later. Okay. Yeah. I got, I got respect. You got scoop. <laughs> yeah. That's, my, my that's not our goal. very active component of this conversation. So from our perspective, though, I think this covers pretty much what we were asked to look at. So would it be fair if I wrote a draft that was shared, either if I finished it before Tuesday, but certainly by Tuesday, that touched on, and, and this, this it, I will make clear that this is kind of a committee, this is a discussion not of committee support for the overall bill, because there isn't universal support of the overall bill, but that based on our subject matter, that we would ask the committee to continue looking at the way to um, 
uh, licensing for retail, I think, is the most important thing to us. Um, the opt-out provision we kind of, we we support by nature. The opt-out per. Um, I, I mean, it's, it sounded to me like we we're, we don't have any problem with the opt-out portion of it because it matches the it matches the uh, uh, alcohol and. I, and generally, that would really, I can't think of anything else right this minute, but that would be, um, or we would talk, I would also talk about acknowledging the fact that, that under the Controlled Substances Act, we can't do a control system as we have for alcohol, which we still believe is a better way. Could we, we believe it's a, I won't say it's better, but it's workable. I'll find some word that, that it's something that we can use. but. Um, does that sound reasonable if I touch on those subjects and then share the text with everybody and we can vote on it on Tuesday? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Michelle just joined us right on time. <laughs> but we did have, I mean, a couple questions that, that um, Damien um, Perry, simply because he's, he wasn't sure. the subject there. No, thank you so much for covering. I appreciate it. So, um, does anybody have those questions for, for Michelle while she's here? Mary, well, <clears throat> I was concerned about law enforcement and um, the roadside testing. Mm -hmm. so, um, so for the record, Michelle Childs, Office of Legislative Council. So um, House Judiciary also got a letter, and they are working on the issue of roadside testing and uh, oral fluid testing. Okay. And they're going to be um, taking testimony on that and working on a proposal next week. And um, uh, Representative Hashim is going to actually, who's on judiciary and is a, mm -hmm. is a DRE, is going to be um, testifying in House Government Operations next week, um, walking them through the process for, for what they do and all that kind of stuff. So we're particularly interested that, you know, maybe you all can walk across the hall and catch some of that testimony. Thank you. Sure. So what we were just finishing up the discussion is that um, our our letter back based on based on what we think is our purview or or subject matter expertise is um, we'll get a letter back that'll talk a little bit about supporting the supporting the um, the. <laughs> I've always considered like the control model for alcohol as being a model for marijuana. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we're gonna, we need a new, we need a new uh, warehouse, so let's save a space for marijuana. And Damien shared with us some of the felonious nature of, of yes. the state undertaking that <laughs> yes. that on. And so, having having heard that, we're just going to address that a little bit, supporting okay. the, the notion that the process that's in the bill seems sufficient sure. as far as it goes for control. Right. We did have um, you know, questions about, and we'll raise these questions about, will the licensing of retail establishments be closer to um, the way we sell beer and wine and cigarettes, which could be on every street corner? Or is it going to be an alcohol where there's going to be a licensing provision that's a little bit more stringent and based on something different than, um, you know, than, than just any, any establishment? You mean whether or not there'll be limitations on the number of retail facilities and location and things like that, yeah. right? And that's, really, that's something that the board's going to be working on. Right, considering. but that's it. We'll just make, yeah. you know, as a focus point, mm -hmm. um, and then supporting the opt-out, you know, the opt-out notion of, <coughs> of um, the licensing. Okay. And so on. Did Damien share with you our, the, his, our discussion the other day about the about the opt-in, opt-out, right? Yeah, I shared with them the history of that right. section. Yeah, so that was, yeah, I didn't know that until this other day, when Damien got out his dusty 1930s hot <laughs> 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 like that. Well, and, and, and as I mentioned, the, um, the, um, the, the notion of, of having said, oh, it should just be like alcohol, I mean, that's just been ingrained in my head for 10 years. Right. And to have it disabused so quickly and thoroughly uh, um, right. was was useful. Um, and Randall had a question though the other day, and I this stuck with me is the locations, and I think he had a question of could it be a food truck, or oh, it, yeah. or in my youth 
The ice cream truck. Yeah, yeah. 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 Accident. Humor. Humor. Um, humor. Donut. Humor. Donut. Right. And I don't think oh, that's yeah. not contemplated or addressed specifically in there. So whether or not, I guess maybe that would be up to the board about whether or not a retail facility. I mean, I think um, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, I think it's not contemplated by the current draft because it's talking about the opt-in, opt-out. I don't know really how that would work if you're driving, driving driving. a <laughs> truck that if you, as soon as they opted out, you just move your truck. Yeah.